all right so we are going to be breaking this magnetism uh, magnetism is the first topic it's when you understand magnetism in depth that you can actually understand electromagnetism you get magnetism just like the younger brother why electromagnetism is not like even the elder brother it's like the father i don't know if you understand so let's move okay so we are going to break the videos into different parts so that if you watch part one you can go on to solve questions and then before you do part two just like that so that it's, if it's just one video you, you get tired and then you know you're able to pause and check your progress in the aspect you have touched so we are going to break them into parts so for this part one we have the first part which, so we are going to follow this scheme okay i'm going to follow this scheme um i just need a space for me to do other things on these boards since I've used here for the skin, okay. So I'm going to manage the other part of the board. So thank God my my camera. Let me quickly adjust it a bit. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, I think I can manage it this way. So the first thing we want to talk about is what what is a magnet? What is a magnet? Now a magnet is a body that has both attractive attractive and repulsive properties you see magnets can attract magnets can they can repulse you get so a magnet is a body that have both what attractive and repulsive properties i want to have to know about magnets is that magnets always settle or they always point or they always settle in the north south direction please this is not primary school so you should be taking note of what i'm saying because i can never voice clearly i don't have to write everything so for example let's say this is a bar magnet this is let's say this is um this not they always settle like this you get on a normal day they settle what in a north south direction okay i want you have to know again is that there's this law called what the law of magnetism and what does this law state it states that like pulls you curl why unlike pulls attract okay now the question is what is a pull okay you see i, I just want to break everything down what is a pull in a magnet for example let's say this is a bar magnet this is the north pole this is the south pole the pole is just like the edges or one side you got this is the north pole and this so if you bring another bar magnet here and here's the south pole here's the north pole you have what like poles something you, something you like um that's the you know we're going to be like it, it, it doesn't look like the same the same pole happy yes that's it will be a same like this they will what repel you grab i know you have actually done this when you were actually smaller especially you don't have a very very fun childhood you know that time we carry two magnets yes when you turn one if you bring it close it will attract if you turn it again you bring it close you cannot bring up them close it will be like repulsive and that time we should do this this kind of local car we'll put we'll turn the pole of one of the uh, magnets and put it inside one iron like a car then turn the other one it's not because it's like post then if you are going closer it's like you're pushing it now say our cars are automatic you see that is so when you have to like post you get this proportion but when they are on like post that's they're not the same as yes not yes south you are going to get what attraction that's what you have to know about what the law of magnetism so just know that what magnets they settle what in the north south direction so the next one talk about here is types of magnets at any point if you don't understand please kindly carry the, um like take the video backwards a bit now we're going to talk about the types of magnet now so basically we have two types of magnets we have what the natural magnet we have the natural magnets and two artificial magnets okay now the question is what are natural magnets so from the world itself we already understand that artificial, mag artificial magnets they are not naturally magnets okay they are just made to become magnets so natural magnets are magnets that are made from magnetic ores people will call this thing already <laughs> from magnetic ores 
magnet that I mentioned, magnetic or example of this magnetic or uh, is this or called lodestone or magnetite. Please take you notice know, our exam based stuff. And is you know magnetite now, you know I has different us. You have emitters, you have magnetite. Magnetite is F E G O four. So magnets are made from natural us or magnetic us rather. They are called what natural magnets. You get and this is what uh, a magnetic ore of what iron. Do you understand? Then artificial magnets. They are magnets that are made from magnetic materials. Okay, from magnetic materials. Example of magnetic materials includes iron, steel, nickel, cobalt. Even uh, sometimes aluminium can be there also. They are magnetic what materials. So magnets that are made from magnetic materials, they are called what artificial magnets. So if you look at it now, that means there are differences between magnets and what magnetic materials. You understand? A magnet on a natural note is formed from magnetic ores. Magnetic materials are materials that serve as artificial magnets. You get the difference now. So that is it, guys. So we have the natural, we have what the artificial. Okay. Now for this, uh, um, okay, I think we'll go into that later. But if we'll go into that later. Shall we just let's just follow what we have here now? So the next thing we want to talk about, and then I forgot to say something. Remember, I talked about bar magnets. I said, this, for example, this is the um, these are the poles. Please take note that magnetism, magnetism, is stronger at the poles, or we can say magnetic force. Magnetic force is stronger at the poles. This is a pole, right? This is a pole than at other parts. So it means as you draw, as you move away from the poles, the magnetic force or the magnetic or magnetic rather um, weakens. Do you understand? So please have that in mind also. So we are going to talk about magnetization now. That's the next thing. But I want you guys to know that magnetization. Let me write it somewhere. Magnetization is tech is common to magnetic materials only do you know if you understand like magnetization is so what magnetic materials so you have not defined what magnet magnetization is let me define it magnetization is the process of turning what magnetic materials so magnets so if I convert magnetic materials to magnets, what have I done? Magnetization. As you can see now, the definition already tells us that magnetization is just for magnetic materials only. So it means, you know we have um, artificial magnets and natural. So natural magnets cannot be magnetized. They always come magnetized. That's why they are natural. Do you understand? So magnetization is for what? It's for what now? Magnetic materials only. Please put that in your head. So there are different ways you can carry out magnetization okay there are different ways you can carry out magnetization there are different ways there are actually two major ways but um, you find to it as looks more the first way i want to talk about is by stroking okay is by stroking is by stroking the question is what is stroking you know normally you know stroking now like when somebody wipes somebody with a cane something like that is stroking like give him 20 strokes Something similar or actually occur here. It's just like using a, a bar magnet, that's a natural magnet, to induce magnetism in another body. And then most times they do it on steel bars. So they use bar magnets to, con to convert steel bars that are non magnetic to magnetic steel bars. Do you understand? We'll get to understand how steel. This is a real magnetism later. It's on this skin, okay? So now that's it for stroking. And then for this stroking, we now have two types of stroking. We have the single touch, and we have what? The divided touch. Now, the major difference between these two is that 
the single touch is done with one with one bar magnet okay while the divided touch is done with what two bar magnet i don't know if you understand very i'm just breaking everything down for you to get so they ask you what type of stroking involves just one bar, mag bar magnet that is what single touch which one involves more than um, involves two bar magnets that's divided touch now the question is how do i know the difference between the single touch and the divided touch right so let's get into it now remember i said in stroking what we do in stroking is to what induce magnetism in a non magnetic steel bar using a bar magnet you understand that's just the concept basically so let's talk about single touch and please take notes stroking just please write this down stroking is done on a bench stroking is done on a bench do you get so in case you just ask you which of the following can stroking be done on just like that you just know that it's a bench so let's talk about divided touch now for example this is the bench all right now this is what the what um the steel bar okay there's no space here let me let me start going from this place now this is that's the bench this is the steel bar that you want to magnetize okay let's make it a, a little bit um longer okay this is steel bar that i want to magnetize then remember I have the, what was the concern behind this stroking we just try to induce magnetism for an already magnetized um uh, what's it called bar magnets to a non-magnetic coat steel bar so we have to bring in our what bar magnets okay let's say this is the north pole uh, let me write it inside this is the north pole this is the south pole so what we do is just to stroke you grab it is just a stroke basically and then as you are stroking we are inducing magnetism in this and then when we induce mag remember i defined the magnet as the body that has both attractive and repulsive repulsive properties right so it means once we magnetize this let me write it now this is a what steel bar which is what non-magnetic then this is what a bar magnet which is what magnetic so i want you to understand this concept that the concept is just like giving what this guy does not have do you understand so that's it so now when we stroke continually gradually this steel bar is going to get magnetized and now if it gets magnetized it's supposed to have both north pole and south pole right so the question is where will the south pole be and where will the north pole so should this place be the north pole where will be the south or where should be the north when here will be the south you see they should ask the same question on this why should be the south rather they should ask the same question we will take questions though we will take questions after everything i want to explain everything here first then i will go to questions i'll show you guys questions and then we'll answer them together okay what i'm just teaching you i'm just trying to equip you so in such a way that when you finish everything here there's no question that you fail again just for you so the question is which side should be the north or should i just speak it at random no there's a way it's done in some tests, they make it very well complicated, but this is my method, and trust me, with this, you are going to go. Just know that whatever you have here is what you have here. South pole. Easy, right? Then there is south. Common sense will tell you that here is what? Not. So that's just the simple way to do it. So if they give you a question, and they are like, um, let me see, they, they just drew it, a diagram like this. So this is a bar magnet. This is the south pole. This is the north pole. Is used to stroke um, a non-magnetic steel bar. Any other want to put the English? They're asking you what is the polarity here? Or what is the polarity here? When we say polarity, I don't know about is it not or south pole? Do you understand? So what you just do, you just remember, just know that whatever you have is what you have here. So this is what we have here is not pole. This place will be not pole. This place will be south pole. That's just it. <laughs> do you understand? So let's go to the next one, which is what the divided touch. Then I will tell you the difference between um the single touch method and the divided touch method now for the divided touch method what you actually use is how many words two steel bars sorry two bar magnets rather you grab so it means as we have one here we are going to let me let me start again let me do the diagram again so remember this is the bench this is the um 
still bad I want to magnetize. One bar magnet should be coming like this. Okay, then I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry about my pen diagram, but that does not give you exam points. Okay, this is what's still bad. Now I want you to know something. I want to just put this in your head that in divided touch, in divided touch method of stroking. In divided touch method of stroking, the stroking, the stroking is done from the center outwards. I'm just on the line this for you. Please have it in mind. Have it in mind. You get during divided touch. What you do is like, for example, this like this both of my hands now they are like the um bar magnet you stroke away from the center so it means this one you draw it towards this way this one you, you get so remember go up there and please take notes take notes both bars they are bars of like they have opposite poles at this middle point so here cannot be south and here will be south i don't know if you understand opposite poles means if one is not here one will be south if one is not here the other one will be south do you understand? And then you stroke outwardly. Yes, you're using for it, okay? So now, the question they will always ask you, they'll give something like this and say, okay, what is the polarity? Yeah, maybe. That is a common sense to tell you that this here is not, here is south, Abi. This here is south, here will be not, Abi. They can never ask you. Now, what they will ask you, they say, look for the polarity, either at this end of this bar magnet, so that they are, this key bar that they are about to magnetize, or this end. So, how do you know it? Remember, I see that same logic that whatever I say will be here. And whatever I say will be here, that's just it. So, since we have north here, this pole will be the north pole. Since we have south here, here will be the south pole. That's just it. And they ask questions on this almost every time. So, the, the difference between the difference between the single touch and the divided touch is that the single touch, sorry. The divided touch, the divided touch produces a stronger magnet within a short time period. Regrab, the divided touch, this one produces what? A stronger magnet on this T bar. So if you are using two, if, if you are giving 10 minutes to induce magnetism on this steel bar, and then you either use one, that single touch or divided touch, you discover that this magnet that you get from this divided touch will be a stronger magnet. You understand? So that's it about what stroking. I believe you um catch you caught that rather. So let's go to the next method. I don't think I forgot anything here, okay? So at any point, if you don't understand, just take the video, just take it back, then you watch again. So let's 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 run the next um, type of um, or the next way of magnetization. And please take notes. Everything about magnetization is always in the north-south direction, okay? North-south direction. North-south direction. So let's talk about the next method of magnetization, which is what the electrical method. Please take note: the electrical method is the best method, is the fastest method. You understand? And is the industrial method of magnetization. You don't mind my writing. No, in med school, oh, oh, graduate as doctors now. They'll tell us to be writing rubbish. So I'm really, I'm trying to my own. I start to teach me how to write rubbish again. It's what I do normally. You understand? Okay, so electrical methods. If you ask me, the industrial method of making magnets is what? Electrical. The best me um, method of making magnets or magnetization is what? Electrical. The fastest way, electrical. Do you understand? And then, how is electrical method done? Unlike stroking that is done on a bench, this guy is done on a solenoid. And what's a solenoid? Is what an insulated 
copper coil okay let me draw let me just try to sketch how it looks like um let's say we have something like this um we have something like this okay and coming down something like this like this put the steel magnet inside sorry the steel bar i don't know why i'm calling it steel magnet so we have something like insulated right um we have something like this Just like that. This will be a direction like this. Okay. So this is just like a sketch of what a solid really looks like. Okay. So this this bar inside is the steel bar that you want to magnet. And please take notes. In magnetization, using electrical method, you use what a direct current. Direct current. Okay. Now we have direct current and we have alternative current. Direct current flows in both directions. Alternative current. Sorry, direct current flows in one direction. What am I saying? But an electric current does not have a solution. It flows in both directions. You get. So please take note to use what? A um, direct current. You get. Alright. So, this um, thing you have to know for. Yeah, electrical method is the best method. Passive method and is the industrial method. And this is the setup. So, what you just have to do is to put this steel uh, bar that you want to magnetize inside the solar unit. That's what you have here. Then, on the current, let electric current pass through it. Do you understand? Electric current pass through it for a long time before you know it will not become magnetized. And then the principle here is that please take note, it works on the principle of what? Principle of the magnetic effect of current. So they ask you a question which are the method of magnetization? Is based on the principle of the magnetic effect of current. This what electric current is not stroking. Do you understand? So this is how you just do it. Place it there, turn on the current, leave it for some time, then you redraw it. You now discover that the steel bar is magnetized. The question is, okay, if the steel bar is not magnetized, how do we know the north pole? How much part do we, how do we know the south pole? Or how do we know the south pole and north pole? The thing is that after magnetization, um, the pole, like if the pole that current flows clockwise to. The, look at it too. The pole that current flows clockwise to becomes the south pole. Why the pole that okay, that current flows? Um, I'm sure that this. I want to write this end somehow. And the clockwise to is what. The north pole. Do you know why I wrote this end like this? N not short way, right? So we have to you have to cram it. Just if you think about clockwise, just know that it's what south pole. If you think about anti-clockwise, it means it's the north pole. You understand? So that's it about this guy. So the polarity um is determined by using this method. If the clock, if the current is flowing clockwise to a particular point, you know that that's the south pole. It is flowing at the clock. You know this. If this is a clock now, clock used to move like this, right? That's an, an the clockwise. You get, you get. Like this is what. So this one is clockwise. This one is what, and the clockwise. So the direction that current flows clockwise to is the south pole, and clockwise is what the north pole. So that's it about. We are just trying to be brief, but I've given you guys the main point. Remember, it was on the principle of what the magnetic magnetic effect of current and it's done in the solar unit this is what an insulated copper coil all right so let's talk about the third method there's not really much stress now let's just put the name here is a um, third method of magnet magnetization is by armoring in the north south direction okay so please just think of that so i'm talking about magnetization right Remember, magnetization is for what? Magnetic materials only. Please take note, you don't magnetize magnets. Magnets are naturally magnetized. So if there is magnetization, there's also what? Demagnetization. So if magnetization is like 
um, making a magnet, making a no magnet or making a magnetic material to become a magnet. It means the magnetization is killing magnetism, magnetism, right? So let's talk about the magnetization, okay? The magnetization. What is the mag? So the magnetization is just like killing magnetism. So we also have three methods. And please take note that the magnetization is common to both magnets and magnetic materials that have been magnetized are magnetic materials that have been magnetized do you understand because the way you change the only process or the only procedure to change what magnetic materials to magnet is towards magnetization so you can use the mag the magnetization to kill what magnetism i also have three methods Number one method, I will talk about the electrical method. Electrical method. And please take note, it is the best method of the magnetization. And the reason is because it kills magnetism, hmm? but it is the magnet. You understand? It kills magnetism, but it does not kill the magnet. The other ways of the magnetization actually kill the magnet too. You understand? That's why it's the best. And how is it done? It's also done in, in what? A solenoid, which is what? Insulated copper curve. It's done well. But this time, please take note anything that has to do with the magnetization is done in the east west direction. Please take notes. Anything about the magnetization is done in the east-west direction. And why is the magnetization done in the east-west direction? That's because when you do it in the north-south direction, yes, it, it, like that's what favors the earth magnetic field. You know, there's an imaginary bar magnet situated at the center of the earth, right? So that bar magnet is oriented at north-south. So it kind of like provide this external magnetic field for all magnets. So if you want to carry out the magnetization and then you don't orient it in the opposite direction, uh, you are just, just like you are wasting your time because the earth itself already favors the north-south direction. So the reason why it's done in the east-west direction is to prevent induced magnetism from the earth. And guess what? I'm going to talk about what induced magnetism here so we understand better. So please take note. Anything that has to do with what demagnetization is done in the way east west direction. Okay, so that's it. and please take notes during demagnetization by electricity or by electrical method, rather, an alternative current is used. And at a current, which is AC, is used. Please take note. And alternative current, which is known as what AC is used during what demagnetization. But for magnetization, you use DC and you're right in north side direction. But for demagnetization, you use what um, the AC and you're right in the east west direction. So that's it. So it's actually the best method why it kills magnetism but retains the magnetic material. Do you understand? That's it about the electrical method of the magnetization. So the other one I'm going to talk about is what? Stroking. You can also call it stroke and marine. So not stroking, rather, it's not called stroking. That was a mistake. It's called amarine or rough handling. Or you can call it the mechanical method. Mechanical method of what? The magnetization. Oh, what you just have to do here is just to be hammering it. You understand? And then please take note if you are hammering it, the magnet should be in the what? East, west direction. So when you hammer it, the other disadvantage of this method and why the two method is prepared over all is because. The armoring destroys the magnet. You understand? Then the third method 
of the magnetization is by eating the magnet. And please take them as you are eating the magnet, the magnet should be where the east west direction. So you see these two last methods. It's not as if they cannot kill magnetism, but they don't only keep magnetism, they don't end there. They keep both magnetism and they spoil the magnetic materials. Do you understand? Okay, so let's move on to the next, which is the magnetic properties of iron and steel. I believe you are gaining value already. I hope you are writing. Let's talk about the magnetic properties of iron and steel. The magnetic properties of iron and steel. Magnetic properties of iron and steel. Please take note both iron and steel and other things like cobalt, nickel, aluminium. They are what magnetic materials. Do you understand? So please take note that iron is just this guy here, right? Steel is an alloy of iron and carbon. Do you understand? You get. So steel is actually stronger than iron. Do you understand? But please take note. Let me talk about iron. Iron magnetizes and the magnetizes more more faster than steel you understand iron magnetizes and the magnetizes more faster than steel iron iron like i would have to this now if you expose both iron and steel to the same um okay, let me just put it here that um induced magnetism in iron is more than in steel induced magnetism in iron is more than in steel means iron magnetizes more than steel under the same conditions do you understand so iron magnetizes more than steel under the same conditions but please take note that steel like now remember iron magnetizes and demagnetizes more faster than steel so it means steel does not magnetize quick but it retains magnetism more than iron do you understand that's the reason why iron is used for soft magnets or temporal magnets meanwhile steel is used for hard magnets or permanent magnets just so you can see this part of the board okay you get so the first difference iron magnetizing is more and the magnetism is more than steel why um also iron the induced magnetism in what iron is more if you expose both of them if you put them under the same condition you want to magnetize both of them iron will always catch more of the magnetism you understand so iron is used for soft magnets temporary magnets steel is used for hard magnets so please take note also that in their usage iron is used uh, in school laboratories school laboratories to explain the concept of magnetism and the magnetism you understand so iron is used in what schools in school laboratories that's what i used to explain the effect of magnetism and the magnetism do you understand also know that iron let me have to wipe this part of the board okay let me just add it here iron is used for making what um electromagnet which require an electromagnet do you know what electromagnets require they require strong 
electromagnet which require strong magnetism in a short period. Do you understand? Then they ask you from state the reason why iron is using making electromagnet is because of this property of iron that it's actually like um, the fact that apart from the fact that it magnetizes faster, it's like it's it has a stronger magnetic um field intensity or something like that compared to steel under the same time period. Do you understand? So iron, so if they ask you which are the following magnetic materials is used in what in what uh, electromagnets, you know it's iron. Then above let's talk about please hope you are writing. I have to wipe this part of the board. Let's talk about this guy. Let me talk about so many things they can ask you here. And also know that okay, iron. You can also use you know, I'm talking about iron now. You can use iron for electromagnets. Do you understand? You can use iron for telephone earpiece too. You can use iron for electric bells. That's soft magnet too. You know it's iron that is used for soft magnet or tubular magnet. So anyway, they want to ask you. Um, you know, say soft magnet is used for what? All of them they are correct. So electric bells follow. Even electric motors. Do you understand? Iron is applicable in these guys. Do you grab? Um, uh, what is it called? Electromagnets. Even in transformers. Because transformers they use electromagnets. Do you understand? So I hope you can link everything. I'm just trying to pull everything for you so that there's no way they can continue. Look at it now. Iron is used for making soft magnets or temporary magnets. So if they ask you which of the following is an application of temporary magnets, there are applications of what? Temporary magnets. Why? It's iron that is used in temporary magnets. So we can say temporary magnets are used for transformers, for electric motors, electric bells, electric earpiece. I don't know if you understand. So it's just that we are relating everything. So when you see iron, you know that it's used for making soft magnets, which is also called what? Temporary magnets. And these temporary magnets, these are the applications. Then let's talk about steel. You know steel is used for permanent magnets. And they, they can use, please take me, they use steel for magnetic compasses. And please take note of this and it's not related, but we'll do it later. Magnetic um, compasses, they work under the principle of angle of declination. We'll get there. Okay? So still, you, um, you can use for making magnetic compasses, Dix drive. Let me write it in this part. Dix drives and even large speakers and even dynamos <laughs> when we get to when we get to this part i will show you guys you guys this definition of dynamos that you know most of you don't really need the real definition okay so let's do this is so iron soft or temporary steel hard or permanent and these are the usage of so you see other things you can use steel to do they are the usage of what permanent magnets so we have talked about what the magnetic properties of iron and steel. I've talked about, you see, let's mark it. I've talked about what magnet, L magnet. I've talked about this, this. I've talked about hard and soft magnets. Okay? So the next thing I want to talk about now is induced magnetism. I want to talk about what now? Induced magnetism. Induced magnetism. Induced magnetism um where is we actually i i don't have, i don't know the right way to explain this but let me just explain the principle for example now this is a bar magnet and this is a north south okay it's magnetic and then you are bringing a nail close to it let's say this is the nail nail hope you know if this nail make contact with this magnet this nail will be magnetized right let's say you are now bringing uh, a pin this is a pin close to this nail if this nail touches this pin you agree with me that the, the pin will be magnetized too right but what is now attracting the pin the nail is the nail a magnet no why is the nail attracting because magnetism has been induced from the magnet towards the non-magnet which is the nail that's why i can attract the pin so in this magnetism is just a simple process whereby a non-magnetic material under the influence of a magnet, now acts like a magnet. 
what is the non-magnetic material here? The ray of the soul is non-magnetic. It's acting as a magnet, thereby attracting to because it's gaining contact towards a magnet. So that's what induced magnetism is. Okay? And it's also the same thing that happens in the earth. There's, there's um, the um, science has it that there's an imaginary um, bar magnet. This is imaginary. I don't know who wrote this because all this is this. I'm just looking sure. Yeah, there's an imaginary um, bar magnet situated at the center of the X. What we talk about magnetic elements, which we'll do in the next part B, we'll see all these things. So, the earth on its own induces magnetism. That's the reason why all these magnets, they can even be magnetized as far as they are in the north south direction. I don't know if you understand. So, the earth itself induces magnetism on everything due in the, on the earth on its own. So, um, that's why when you want to do the magnetization, I said it earlier that you what you do it in the what east west direction to break out of what the magnetic influence of the earth. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about here is magnetic shielding. Magnetic shielding. Magnetic shielding. Okay, magnetic shielding. Now the question is, what is magnetic shielding, right? What is magnetic shielding? Very, 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 very what is it? Magnetic shielding. Okay, let me just type. Let me write. This is a process of protecting a magnet from the external influence of a that's a that's a, um, um, a bigger magnet now okay from the external influence of a um okay let me just let me i don't have to i don't know the right way this is the process of protecting a magnet from an external from the effect him from the effect or influence of an external magnetic field. Thing is, I don't care about these things. When you understand the concept, English will not be a problem. You just have to look for the best um, words to combine to give you the meaning. So, when you protect um, a magnet from the effect or influence of an external magnetic field, you now call that what a magnetic shielding. And please take notes that magnetic shielding you can ask you this is used to prevent cathodes with tubes from the external effects of the earth magnetic field is that is down so they have for cathode ray tube. You understand? So that's it. So under magnetic shielding, we have two different types or different parts here. Okay? We have two different categories here. We have the use of magnetic keepers. And then we have the use of magnetic sheet itself or strings. Okay? So we are going to talk about both of them. We are going to talk about the differences also. I'm going to wipe this part of the board now. Let's talk about the magnetic keepers. Let me show you how it works. Now, let's talk about. There are some things you should note here first. Now, if you are using magnetic keepers, just know that magnetic keepers are soft iron bars. Do you understand? And they are placed at the edges please take note edges not middle edges of two magnets with opposite poles with opposite poles facing each other you understand so he'll ask you what are magnetic keepers they actually soft iron words bars and they are placed at the edges i beg of you please take notes they have asked questions on this many times and people will fail it because you see different 
similar options. Number one, there are two things here you should know. Number one, the magnetic keepers themselves, that is soft iron bars. They are placed at where? They are placed at where? The edges. And then, apart from being placed at the edges, the 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 magnet itself, the the band magnet itself that you want to look at, they are placed with opposite poles. For instance, look at that. Look at the arrangement. This is the first bar magnet. This is the second one. This is north south. Opposite poles here will not be south north. You understand? So this is the arrangement. So you see these two things. These are another what? The soft iron bars. You understand? Soft iron bars. They are both. They are. They are two. Put them at the edges. And the reason why we use iron bars and not split bar. Is because iron magnetizes and demagnetizes easily. Yes, and so with this arrangement, you have protected these two bar magnets on the external influence of the Earth's magnetic field. Do you understand? So that's it, guys. So please take note, please take note, please take note. You place them opposite poles, you put the soft iron bars at their edges. I will use iron because iron magnetizes and the magnetizes easily. And the reason why we do this sheeting is to prevent weakening of the magnets. Okay? Of the bar magnets. Let me just do it. We are preventing weakening of what? These bar magnets. That's why we are sheeting them. That's why we are using magnetic keepers. So please, let's go to the next one, which is the last thing we'll do for now before we take questions. Magnetic sheets. They are also made of iron, but these ones they are what? They are soft iron rings. And then, please take note that the iron duty is towards the divert the external magnetic field or external magnetic energy field feed influence rather okay that would be better so they only divert it and they use magnetic sheet or screens one of the usage is that they are used they are used to pre, uh, protect protect moving coil instruments from a standard magnetic effect. You understand? They are especially used for magnet for what? Moving coil instrument. Example of moving coil instrument, we have moving coil meter, which is the galvanometer itself. You understand? Also, we have moving coil galvanometer, moving coil ammeter. They are all many. So that's it, guys. So we are done with these things. So I believe this video is very, very, very sanitary. So you have to do now watch then um so it's okay it's about 50 minutes of length so i'm going to pause it and okay no, we'll just continue shall i just take questions on this aspect so what i, I want to do at this time just watch to the questions then play each part two times before you proceed to the next one see you on the questions part